welcome to this week's episode of The Dozen. As you can probably tell by, uh, you know, not as much going on in here, uh, Tyler Shore is not with us this week. He's out, I don't know, vacationing or partying or having a good time somewhere else. Uh, so I am your guest host this week, Brian Nordstrom, Fan Experience Director. Uh, and we have a very special guest this week. Uh, first time appearing, I believe, uh, on The Dozen. Uh, and he is a member of the Growler staff. Uh, let's introduce Nick Stoglin. Hey, Nick, how are you? Good, good. So, like I said, first time on the dozen. Welcome. Thanks, Ryan. Um, we uh, tell us a little bit about yourselves uh, for those who who don't know you or haven't seen you, maybe around the ballpark yeah. before. Um, maybe. A little bit about your past, how you got to the Growlers, maybe any internships you've been a part of, any um, cool co-workers you had at that internship. Yep, I see so, where you're going there, I see where you're going there. Fill us in. So, uh, Brian, we know each other from the United Shore Professional Baseball League. We interned there together in 2015 now? Something like Something that, like yeah. Long time Forever ago. Forever ago. So, I've known you longer than anyone here, but I started after you in 2018 with doing like group sales and things moved up to doing corporate ticket sales, and then as of this last April, mid-COVID, all that stuff, um, I transitioned into the director of special events with the team. Um, so just doing a lot of our festivals we do here, and then other just company picnics, different stuff we do around the ballpark. Just coordinating it, ex executing it, just making sure it all runs smooth. So you've kind of been all over the map here. I have, yeah. I started off in the baseball stuff and kind of worked my way over into some events, and I don't really... Uh, touch too much of the baseball stuff anymore um, but I'll still be around for the season and all that so it'll be fun gotcha yeah. now uh, you haven't been doing events for as long as, as probably you were doing the baseball stuff you have a preference yet which one you liked better um, I think the event stuff is cool because it's changing every single day um, but the baseball stuff is kind of my passion and what I got into you know how I got introduced to the team and what you know what I wanted to go into when I graduated high school or uh, college and all that so um, yeah, I think right now the event stuff is fun. It's hard in a COVID year, and the last year has been tough on events, but um, I enjoy it. It's fun. Gotcha. Now, director of special events, let's touch on that a bit. Mm -hmm. um, I know that we always preach talking about fun and how we're more than just baseball, and we want to be um, a fun company and an entertainment company, um, and that's kind of where your position is really was born. Um, so what does that mean? What, is it, what does that all entail? Yeah, so um, in I think 2016, our GM, Brian Colopy, came up with the idea to do another event after the season. We have a ballpark that we rent from the city. Um, it's a great space to do fun things. So he created an idea to do a donut and beer festival. Um, he went to a couple meetings around the Kalamazoo area and basically got laughed out of a couple meetings trying to like pitch this idea to people and for them to get on board with it. Um, despite all that, he decided to go ahead and do it anyway, um, and that's kind of where my position was born. We needed someone who could figure out all that stuff, um, and we you know, put it together back then, and then I filled in the role since, but um, that kind of spawned some new festival ideas after it went really well, and it was kind of a cult following. We have Sweetwaters in the uh, area that's a you know just a staple in the donut industry and everyone knows them so um, we kind of you know use that um, use those fans and then kind of mixed it with what we do best which is beer and fun and um, all that and uh, yeah we just made it kind of out of thin air and then it's kind of spawned some new festivals that we've done we've done taco and tequila fest bourbon and barbecue um, we're looking at maybe doing a wine festival just a bunch of different food and drink pairings and just you know a fun day at the ballpark gotcha now Let's start with the donut and beer. I, I, you talked about a little bit of how that came about, got laughed out of the room a little bit. Uh, why donut and beer? You know, taco and tequila makes sense. Uh, mac and cheese fest, uh, that mac and cheese goes with everything. When I'm getting my donut in the morning, I don't think I'm grabbing a beer. So no. wh why and, uh, and, and why does it work so well? For sure, I think um, the thing that we like to say is it's Homer Simpson's favorite festival gets beer, he gets donuts, what more could you want besides that? Um, I think that's kind of where it spawned from. It's just a cool mix of different inspired, um, you know, 
niche products. Breweries are super big in Kalamazoo, um, and in a lot of areas now, breweries are huge. And then here we just have those donut shops that are really big staples, like I mentioned, Sweetwaters, and then even around the state, like you always can find a good mom and pop donut shop, get a good fixed donut, and just you know enjoy the rest of your day. So I think that's kind of where the the idea came from, and we just kind of ran with it and put our own little spin on it. And it's, it's worked out; people like it. Gotcha. Now we were, if I'm not mistaken, one of the first to do something like that, an event kind of of that magnitude, and, and that first time we've done it, um, got thousands of people out here, is that right? Yeah, for sure. I think every year we've done a Donut Beer Fest, we've sold the, like, the event out um, just due to the fact that it's went well the first year. It's kind of that like viral, noteworthy festival that doesn't come around very often. Everyone's got like a, you know, a fair or something like that, but a donut beer fest is very specific, and if you don't go to it the first time, who knows if you'll ever be able to go to it right. again. So um, I think that draw drew a lot of people in. Gotcha. Now with all these different food and drink festivals, um, is it something that's just for adults? You know, you hear beer, you hear tequila, or um, and then also is it just food that comes with it, the food and drink, or you know what what else is going on that might be good for? Uh, the whole family or um, yeah. just for kind of general entertainment for sure yeah I think donut beer fest mac and cheese fest there are some that are just like super family friendly everyone in the family can bond over a great plate of mac and cheese or something like that or even a great donut so I think there there are some festivals that we do that are family friendly we do inflatables we just make it fun for everyone to attend they're not super crazy you know beer festivals that are um, heavy on the on the drinks and things like that. So um, everything we do here is trying to trying to be family friendly. So I would say any of our festivals are you know open to the whole family and uh, you know able for anyone to attend. Gotcha. Now you mentioned uh, also called it Homer Simpson's favorite festival. Uh, I remember in the past uh, we even had a dunk tank and Homer Simpson made an appearance and uh, you could dunk him in the water. We've had. Um, different bands playing, so there's all kinds of fun stuff. We've had cornhole tournaments, so there's plenty of different uh, fun, entertaining things to do when you come to these festivals while you're enjoying um, the food and drink as well. So uh, kind of walk me through um, what's the festival like uh, basically from the time you show up and uh, kind of lead me through it. Yeah, for sure. So the cool part about our festivals and the way that tickets work is you pay for your ticket and everything's included. So once you show up and check in, you're all set to go. You don't have to touch your wallet the whole time. Um, we're here and we kind of got that from some of the growler stuff that I know you're familiar with, with pack sales. Um, so we've taken that same model, kind of put it over to the festivals. Basically, you show up, um, you check in, you get all your materials, you get a cool lanyard cup or something like that. Um, and then you uh, go on in and you just walk from booth to booth, see what you like, um, kind of decide what you think you want to try, and then you just hand over a token and they serve you right up there and you can get your food and drink and you can, you know, hold, hold your donut in here while you're Very walking convenient. around. Yeah, these were kind of a cool idea um, just to be able to, like, be hands-free while you're, you know, enjoying the festival. So um, those have been a big hit. And then even with, like, Mac and Cheese Fest, we did, like, hand out sporks that are cool that you could just use the whole time and just wash them off real quick so um, yeah it's a fun experience you get some stuff some stuff to go home with hats and merch all that crazy stuff we got going on and uh, yeah it's just show up run around try what you want and then you know you know go go on to the next thing afterwards <laughs> gotcha which a lot of people like to do so sure now what is your favorite festival that we've done so far I think my personal favorite festival would be Mac and Cheese Fest. We oh, held great. it here in 2019. Couldn't do it last year, unfortunately, but um, we're hoping to do it again this year. And it was just super fun. I believe it was like one of our biggest attendances that we had. Um, and everyone makes a Mac and Cheese and everyone has their own cool spin on it that it doesn't get monotonous as you're trying different stuff. Everything you try is barbecue pulled pork or it's, you know, special breadcrumbs or something like that so I think that is one of my favorites for sure gotcha. and correct me if I'm wrong but that also kind of played a factor into the success of that uh, into creating the Mac Daddies last yeah. year is that right absolutely yep we found out by doing a mac and cheese fest that some people just really 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 love mac and cheese and they just can't get enough of it Guilty. And it's, yeah it's just one of those meals that is a perfect side for you know a lot of the ballpark food we serve and all that stuff so 
Um, that kind of propelled us to start the Mac Daddies last year when we really needed to, um, and it you know worked out. And now everyone thinks of the Mac Daddies as a baseball team, um, but it actually spawned from doing one of our mac and cheese festivals. And fun fact, when we were brainstorming what to name the team, it was. Nick Stoglin himself, who yep. threw out Mac Daddies, and uh, That's true. the second we heard that, the idea kind of took off from there. So, uh, Northwoods League, Michigan Division Champion Mac Daddies, that is. Yeah, I couldn't ex <laughs> expected it to be that crazy or that big. I just throw out a dumb idea, and we latched onto it real well. I just I had the idea from uh, Dog Central in Mount Pleasant. They have a Mac Daddy dog that I okay. usually order. So um, that's kind of where I got it from, and I was just like. Throw it out there, see what happens, and it's, it stuck real hard. I sure. was not expecting it to do anything, but it was, it's cool. Now at these festivals, you also get your run of the mill. Uh, you know, there, there's plenty of different great types of food um, with the hot dog or hot dogs. I don't know with the tacos, with the mac and cheese, with everything else. Um, is there some weird combinations of things too that you usually get? Yeah, I think. Um, a lot of the weird stuff comes with like the mac and cheese fest or like even the taco fest like we have a a really good vendor of ours that does like a taco egg roll so it's like it's not your typical taco it's a mixture of uh, you know a egg roll with some normal taco stuff that you get inside of it and it was a big hit last year with the people who actually attended um in 2020 so yeah there are definitely unique spins on things i know like Sweet waters and some places will do like specialty donuts and just different stuff that they wouldn't normally do, but you know you want to show off for the festival for all the people that we got. So sure. um, that helps. So there's some things you're too. not when you go to a restaurant, you're not normally going to get right. these, and you can almost only find them here mm -hmm. uh, at some of our festivals. And I know you mentioned uh, 2020 and uh, mac and cheese we couldn't do, um, but we did have a taco and tequila fest. We did. Um, walk me through kind of the challenges of last year. Um, and I know from experience that we we had a pretty successful fest, safe yeah. for everyone. Um, so the challenges and kind of how you overcame those. Yeah, for sure. So we had a full slate of a lot of festivals going on last year, and obviously with the pandemic and everything, uh, we had to kind of st take a step back and be like, okay, what can we do? What can we not do? What's safe for our fans? What's you know going to be too tough to pull off? So um, after postponing Taco and Tequila Fest twice. From May 4th or 5th, we moved it all the way to October 10th, and we ended up doing it at Fifth Third Ballpark. Um, we did it in waves of people under the state regulations, um, and we just, you know, we made it work, and those who wanted to attend could still attend, um, and we just, you know, we tried to do it the best we could, and, you know, that we just learned as we were going, and we made it work, um, and I think that'll help us a ton for this year as well, because we still have the same restrictions. We'll still have some of the same guidelines and the safety precautions in place that we learned from last year um, and we'll just continue to push forward with those and we plan to have like a pretty full slate of festivals this summer and mostly into the fall. Gotcha. Yeah. Now with that festival being held uh, up in Grand Rapids at Fifth Third Ballpark, um, is that something that um, maybe we'll be seeing more of in the future? I know we love to have our festivals here but yeah. we keep adding festivals and uh, Maybe there's going to be more of that coming. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, Kalamazoo is a great launching pad for our festivals, um, and we like to do it here. It's our home stadium. It you know helps us logistically with things. But um, the plan is to move the festivals throughout the Midwest. So this year, uh, we plan on having you know six or so festivals all in different locations throughout the Midwest. Um, so can't announce too much just yet, but uh, there is some stuff waiting to be announced. Uh, you know shortly so gotcha is there anything uh, so you mentioned it there's a lot coming in 2021 here um, is there anything that you can tease us to, to what's coming or is it all under wraps right now it's kind of all under wraps I uh, kind of have been telling people here lately that I uh, get yelled at probably at least once a week for saying too much about some of the stuff on up, up and coming just because I you know we haven't announced anything yet um, we usually try and keep all that under wraps until we do like a big announcement and we get um, all the people on the priority list and then we do a quick sale um, for the tickets. So I don't want to give too much away um, so I don't get in trouble, honestly. <laughs> but uh, we do have, you know, we're planning on bringing Taco and Tequila back. We want to bring Mac and Cheese Fest back. We want to do a new festival that's unannounced this year that we, you know, have slated um, and planned to do. 
and then yeah, just kind of bring in these places to the Midwest and uh, uh, trying new venues. Gotcha. And we are always looking for new creative uh, festivals. We try and come with, up with some crazy things every year. Uh, so if you, the fans, have any ideas of things that you want to see or some weird combinations that you think go well together, let us know and uh, we'll yeah. definitely take that feedback because we're always trying to, to add more, like you said. Right, absolutely. It, you know, you can only rack your brain so many times about, okay, what food and drink go together? What this and that go together? Sometimes you need an outside source to say, hey, like, you know what I really has a cult following is, you know, corn dogs. We should do a corn dog festival. So any wacky ideas you guys have, I'd love to hear them. Awesome. And uh, where can fans go when those announcements are made? Where are they going to be seeing those? Is that just on the Growlers pages? Is there anywhere else that, that they can see that? Right. So the Growlers pages will probably have a lot of it um, for the stuff that's hosted in Kalamazoo. And then just each respective um, website or Facebook page of the event. We have a Mac and Cheese Fest one. We have a Taco and Tequila one. We have a uh, Don't Have Beer Fest one. So just keep updated on our Facebook pages. That's where all the big, big announcements will happen. Awesome. Well... There you have it. That kind of covers a lot of uh, you know, what we've done in the past, what we're looking to do this yep. year. So uh, I thank you for coming on. I'm getting hungry just thinking about Thanks all these different me. festivals that, uh, that we've done. So yeah. Um, yeah, be on the lookout for that. We're really excited about our baseball coming up, but we also have the festivals as well um, that are going to be in the mix. And there's a lot of cool stuff coming down the line here. So. Uh, for Nick Stoglin, uh, for myself, Brian Nordstrom, thanks for tuning in to uh, this week's episode of The Dozen.